Welcome back everyone to this second video where we discuss access control rules. In the previous video, we saw how we could secure our API with access control rules, not just on the API level, but also on the resource level. But we also saw there that there was a hole in our API because the table access control rule wasn't guarded, wasn't actually being used by the script. So at the moment, we've still got a big hole in our API and we desperately need to fix it. If you recall from our previous video, we saw that our vehicle table here had two read access control rules, one for the user role and one for the admin role. And we also saw in spite of that, that if we went to do some testing and try to retrieve a vehicle using that API, using the integration user that does not have either of those roles, if we click on send here, we get a response back. So we've got access to the API, we've granted access to this user, to this role in the last video. But once we're in, we can go shopping. We've got access to everything. We can view records, create records, delete records. The table access control rules are not being evaluated at all. So what should we do about this situation? What do you think? What ideas do you have? If you're thinking access control rules, you're partly correct. We absolutely need to do that. There is no way around modifying an existing access control rule, creating a new one or else assigning another role to this user so that user will have access to the table. We need to do that. But we could create all the access control rules in the world. At the moment, none of them are being evaluated. So we need to fix that. We need to actually tell the script to look at the table access control rules and see if the user is authorized to access that data to perform that operation. In ServiceNow, by default, all server-side scripts will not evaluate access control rules on the table level. So if you're running business rules or some other kind of server-side script, those access control rules will not be evaluated. The script will actually run as a system user, and that's exactly what's happening here with our web service. So what we need to do is actually tell the script to evaluate that. And to do that, it's real easy. The first thing that we could do is go ahead and create a new access control rule. So in Studio, if I come here and then select access control, this time it's just going to be a standard access control rule for records in a table, so not a REST endpoint ACL. So we've selected record here and the operation, whatever you like, create, delete, etc. And then we'll just go ahead and select the table and then pop in the integration user here. Okay. And we could just repeat that step for all the other CRUD operations that the integration user should have permission for. But in our case, I think I'll just keep it simple and we'll go to the group for that user, the vehicles integration group, and then just assign the admin role because we know already that the admin role can perform all CRUD operations, including delete. So it's probably just quicker for us to do it that way. But you'll just have to see in your particular situation if that is the solution or if you need to create a new access control or modify an existing one. So we'll go ahead and save that. And then the second thing we'll have to do is come to our scripts. So I've already gone ahead in our API and created a third version of it. If you don't know how to version your APIs, I created a separate video in this series a little bit earlier. So go ahead and have a look at that. So here I've got my existing version ones and twos, but down the bottom, I've got my version three resources. So this is going to be our new and improved and much more secure API. So I'll just modify one of the resources here, the get vehicle one and come to our script. Now, the only thing we need to do here is to modify the API that we're using for querying the table. At the moment, we're using Glide Record, but there is another one called Glide Record Secure. And the difference is, is that Glide Record Secure will evaluate access control rules. Glide Record will not. So your business rules, your server-side scripts, like your scheduled jobs, uh, will be run as a system user by default, unless you're using Glide Record Secure or the Glide Query with ACLs method. There's actually another one that you can use as well. There's a link to the documentation for that. So all we need to do here literally is add the word secure after Glide Record. Now, for some reason, the name doesn't resolve like it usually does. If you're using Visual Studio, it will resolve. The system will recognize it if you're using the ServiceNow extension in Visual Studio. But for some reason, it doesn't work here. But that is correct. So we'll go ahead and save that. 
And now we can go ahead and test our version two. So that should just work fine, like it did before, because we're still using the glide record method there, or the glide record query method rather. If we come to the version three here, okay, and send that request, that should also work now because this user now has the necessary access control rule and we've modified the script as well to say, we're gonna evaluate ACLs this time. So if I execute that, that works just fine. Now what we could go ahead and do is come to our group here and then take away that admin role from the group. And what do you think the response will be now? What do you think the result will be? So if I go ahead and test this for version three, oh, it worked again. Hmm, do you know why that may be? Something to do with cookies. So what you can do in Postman is actually clear those cookies. If you come down here, click on it, you can see the cookies that the system is currently storing for this session. So just remove all those session cookies so the user will have to authenticate again anew. And then we will send the request once more and we find we get exactly what we want. That in this case, we've just produced a message saying no vehicle found, but you can generate whatever message that you want. You know, it may make sense to have a message like this rather than you know the user is not authorized or authenticated to perform this operation. Do you wanna give out that information or do you just wanna say nothing or something simple that is actually not really the cause of the issue? So you don't give away any clues to any potential hackers. So before we wrap up, let's just do one more test, this time using the table API. So in a previous video, we tested this using Postman as well. So if we open up our save get vehicle request here, we're actually using a different user. We're not using the integration user, we're just using the user user. And this user actually has the permission to look at records inside this table. So if we send that request here, we'll see we get the record back, okay? And that's what we expect. But now if we were to change this to the vehicle integration user with the respective password and try that in the table API this time, not our custom scripted API, but the table API provided by ServiceNow, we get user not authorized. Okay, a slightly different message, but the result is the same. We do not have access. We do not have read access there. So in this case, even though we don't have read access to the API itself, we can't actually see what the API is doing. We can see, however, that that table API is looking at the access control rules for the table. So if the integration user that is connecting to the API wants to perform an operation, the system will check in this case whether that is permissible or not. So to sum up, whenever you're creating scripted REST APIs in ServiceNow, do not use the Glide Record API. Use Glide Record Secure or Glide Query with ACLs. Because if you don't do that, you're just opening up your API to attacks. And actually you wouldn't even classify it as an attack because the API itself permits that. You are allowing this to happen. Okay, so don't. All right, so that is the moral of the story here. Use Glide Record Secure or Glide Query with ACLs and your API will be a lot more secure. Now, in the next video, we are going to take a look at authentication. So up until this point, we've authenticated using account credentials, a username and password. That is also inherently insecure. There is a better way to do it and it's using OAuth and access tokens. So stay tuned for that one.